Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the fifth lecture of the third week on bioenergetics of life processes. So, if you recollect the previous lecture, we talked about the structure of the chlorophyll, I talked about the concept of the polyenes where you have alternate uh, single and double bonds, the molecules which are exceptionally good in trapping light and photosynthesis or the structure of chlorophyll and its uh, compact pollen like structure is an inspiration for lot of uh, organic and inorganic chemists to emulate these molecules by making synthetic chlorophylls and other molecules okay, which can trap light and can be used for harvesting solar energy or any form of light energy. So, I will just uh, request you to think slightly uh, more bold. If you think of it, today we talk about all these uh, solar panels, silicon, crystalline silicon based solar cells. As a matter of fact, nature has been harvesting solar energy since time immemorial in the form of these molecules which are complex molecules which are extremely beautiful molecules. So, nature solar cell is driven by chlorophyll which is that is the reason why I put up that structure for you the complex structure of chlorophyll in front of you that kind of gives you a feel that this is where nature has developed order out of simple atoms and ions and put them together by putting some energy. So, that is what I am repeatedly trying to tell you nature is all about order out of chaos by some form of energy which is being put into the system. So, following up on our uh, lecture series, so before I move on to the how the light falls on these uh, chlorophyll molecules and how the chlorophyll molecules get excited. I wanted to give you a scheme of things what we are going to follow in this light uh, harvesting process. So, to start off with let us uh, ok. So, this is our week 3 lecture 5 W 3 L 5 and in sum total this is lecture 15. And now going back to the structure what where I started this week structure of the thylakoin membrane. If you look at the thylakoin membrane so, you have to keep this uh, structure in mind. So, your chlorophyll molecules are sitting here where I am putting the dots and I told you that there are two different reaction centers which have different proportions of uh, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B molecules sitting there. So, those reaction centers. So, now are out here. Now, let me just draw it having shown you this let me again come back. So, if this is the thylakoid membrane ok. This is how the thylakoid membrane is arranged. So, 
something like this. Okay. Now, on those thylakoid spaces and the thylakoid membrane, so this is where your reaction centers are sitting. And there are two different kind of photosystems which are involved in it. One is called photosystem 1, the other one is called photosystem 2. And this photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 are decided by, I told you that chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B. So, the A is to B, there are different ratios. Okay. So, these have different ratios of A's and B which are making these photosystems and these two photosystems are physically at different coordinates. Okay. So, these are some of the things what I wanted to highlight before you should not miss the global scheme of things. Okay. And <clears throat> both these photosystems and this is the typical case I am talking about in the plant cell. There are other modifications to it there where you have only one system which is functioning and like so and so forth or almost the two systems are closed in. So, but this is the typical one I am talking about where the photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 are standing at a different kind of reduction potential or oxidation potential. So, I am introducing a concept here. So, what that essentially means is these two, so you have to understand certain things. These two, say for system 1 and for system 2, if I say that they are standing at different reduction potential or oxidation potential, that means that both these systems have different power or different ability in terms of a number of giving away electron or accepting an electron, whichsoever scale you wanted to follow, whether electron acceptance is your scale which that means reduction or electron donation is your scale which is oxidation. So, in other words, whichsoever scale you follow, they are sitting at different redox potential or different reduction or different oxidation potential and that is governed by their light capturing abilities and based on that their electron emission. So, the scheme, so the two concept what I just now highlighted is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 are sitting at different redox potential 1. Second, this redox potential essentially means that power to accept or donate electrons, power to accept or donate electrons. And the third aspect what I wanted to highlight here is the proportion of chlorophyll A is to B is different for for system 1 and for system 2. Different proportion of chlorophyll A versus chlorophyll B. 
Now, based on their abilities of accepting or electron or donating electron, they could be put on a scale and we'll come later on to that. Okay. Now, when the light falls, going back a little up here, when the light falls on these photosystems, both these photosystem, the chlorophyll molecule gets excited. And when the chlorophyll molecule get excited, the chlorophyll molecule ejects an electron. So basically, light energy could help chlorophyll to eject an electron from its from its structure. So this is that chlorophyll structure we talked about. So upon receiving light, this has the ability to eject an electron. Okay. So yeah, so it can eject an electron upon absorbing light. Now, when it ejects an electron by absorbing light, so essentially what is happening? CHLORO chlorophyll as absorbing light, ejecting an electron. So, in that situation, the chlorophyll molecule becomes positively charged. and starts behaving like a radical. Now, this chlorophyll has to be brought back to its ground state because you have finite number of chlorophyll molecule. And if you see a leaf when it is formed, okay. So, this leaf when it is formed, start with initially the leaf is slightly reddish, okay. If you look at it, the leaf formation and very light green, okay. And as days passes by, as the leaf matures, it becomes green and as this passes by, as it ages over time, this becomes, it is drooping, it becomes yellow. Have you wondered what has actually happened? So, I will come to this story, just before I get into this story. So, when a chlorophyll molecule absorbs light, it ejects an electron and it becomes hyper excited. Now, there are two options. Either a leaf should have infinite number of chlorophyll. Every time a chlorophyll is ejecting an electron, it gets destroyed. But the problem is that if this is allowed to hang out there, this will act as a free radical and it will damage many things. So, it has to be brought back to its ground state and of course, there is a finite number of chlorophyll molecule into the system. So, you need an, an electron donor who will ensure to bring this chlorophyll back into the system. Now, having said this, let me tell you that both photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 will be doing the same thing. They will eject an electron upon absorbing light. But the thing is that the electrons which will be ejected will be ejected from a different redox potential. This is the part what I am to tell you. If they will be ejecting an electron, but they will be ejecting an electron at different redox potential because the electrons are harbored at different molecules. So, the electron will remain electron only, but they will be coming from different redox potential source. So, if I had to put an scale out there, if I say that like you know I have a scale of redox potential.
So, say for example, an electron coming from say photosystem 1 and an electron coming from photosystem 2, they may be sitting at different redox potential. So, the electron ejected from here will be coming out from a different redox potential. This is one concept which I wanted to highlight at this stage before I proceed further. And whenever from photosystem 1 or photosystem 2 or from both the photosystem electron is being ejected out, that chlorophyll molecule which is getting excited has to be brought back to its ground state. How it is being brought back to its ground state? There are two options. When a chlorophyll molecule eject an electron, so chlorophyll ground state, chlorophyll excited state and there is an electron, it can recombine again and come back and makes a chlorophyll. There is a highly possible, there is a recombination. But that recombination could not happen if this remains in this state for a certain period of time and we will come later about that what is that period of picofemto seconds of time you have to remain there at that state so that it could not recombine and these were experiments which have been done. Now over this situation when I told you that it is light green and it is forming the green structure and it becomes yellow. The yellowing comes because of two things which happens. As the plant ages, the molecule what we talked about, the nature solar cell, this magnesium gets moved out, it gets injured and gets moved out and then you are left with only the porphyrin ring which has a yellowish tinge and it gets kind of distorted and everything and that gives you the yellow color. Now having said this, a very similar molecule which gives this, of course the chlorophyll is green okay? and if you remove the, otherwise it is green but if you remove the magnesium it becomes yellow. Okay. But if you replace this magnesium with iron, then this is the famous molecule, the hemoglobin, which is red. So, so you are observing at the coordination complex, you how the color completely changes and you remove that magnesium, the spectrum and what you observe is out here the yellowing and this is where the aging of the leaves takes place. So what I wanted to highlight today is electrons are ejected into this system but electron are generated from different redox potential which you can define either as oxidation potential or as reduction potential. This fundamental concept I wanted to highlight today because this concept will come very handy as we will be moving on now to how the energy is being transmitted from this electron to different kind of energy harvesting molecules and how this whole bioenergetics really comes into play and this redox potential also brings you to the concept that they are sitting at different work functions and that was the reason why I told you that we need all these values of delta G and enthalpy and all those kind of concepts to understand this. So today's take home message will be the existence of two kind of photosystem ejecting electrons from different redox potential and the chlorophyll molecule attains its green color because of the magnesium and when you remove with aging it becomes yellow and the photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 are sitting at physically distinct location on the thylakoid membrane and photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 are made up of differential ratio of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B thereby modulating the spectrum because the way you mix it, the spectrum is going to shift either this side or shifting is going to shift. So there is always a shifting depending on the ratio of it. These are the take home messages what I wanted to highlight in the today's lecture and we will continue in the next week 
with the electron transport chain in chloroplast and mitochondria and the ATP synthase and the chemiosmotic hypothesis. Thank you.